My favorite is Good Witch. That one's just so fun. It's so swingy. Like I, I, I've always really loved that one, and it has lots of fun eight-string stuff in it too. I might have to give it to um, one of our older songs called Pan's Daughter that we just recorded for the new one. Uh, it's just so slow and so heavy, and the first time I heard the band do it on a live stream, I was, I was blown away. It's got the band's doom roots, but it's also very fast and heavy and epic and scary and metal. You could ask me again tomorrow and it'd be different, but that's, that's a good one. I'd probably go with the Unibirth Suite, because that one has a lot of history for, for me and for, you know, the, basically my musical roots and everything, and it ended up turning out uh, in a way that I couldn't have even imagined, so I'd probably go with that one. That's definitely a tough second to go yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost said that one, but I didn't want to. People are really going to like that one, I think. Yeah, that's one of our best. Bar, Bar Paddle and Ball! ball. Next question. Next. Desert Island album for me would probably be Black Sabbath's uh, Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. I think mine would have to be Haken Affinity. Oh, hell yeah. That's a good one. That's an incredible album. I might say Iron Maiden Power Slave. That's the one that got me into doing music for real. I wouldn't say it's like my favorite thing ever but it's a record that will always have weight to me, and I would Desert Island the hell out of that album. I'd say as far as like local venues, like Exit In or Basement East or something like that. Yeah, Basement East is fun. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? I think I like Basement East and the Exit In, just a little bit. They got a big old stage. Yeah, big old stage, and I mean, yeah. Now, they have a really cool green. You can dump so much trash on that stage. The auditorium. The auditorium, and that's spelled O D D, auditorium. They just have weird shit on the walls, and it's just a strange little place in Asheville. There's that place in Clarksville that we played the house show with all the mirrors in the fucking oh, yeah, basement. Oh yeah, magical place. And then there was the uh, possum stock stage, which is basically like two dressers knocked over. The, this is your stage. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> in the middle of the woods. A lot of the places we played outside of the state are just fairly ordinary. Dive bars, clubs, that sort of thing. Nothing that really sticks out. We haven't played like an amusement park or anything like that yet, or a seafood restaurant. That Clarksville show I mentioned with the mirrors, definitely. Anytime we play Clarksville, the kids there, they go fucking nuts. Georgia, like Atlanta's a good crowd. Huntsville is a good crowd. We haven't been there in like over five years. Lexington is really good to us. Lexington, Kentucky. Maryland and uh, like the Frederick area. Like every time we've played in that area. And we're going to be returning this summer for Maryland Doomfest. Most people go with our hardest around here for us, like locally in the Nashville area. But that goes without saying, I think. Uh, that we are here to destroy it. Good, that was good. <laughs> Chase. I don't know, how do you follow that up? <laughs> yeah. There's not going to be anything left. You're right, not when I'm done with it. Smoldering. That's how it's going to be, smoldering. I do like that there's something for everybody in Nashville, you know, obviously there's the huge country scene, and there's... Rock, though, there's a big hip hop, underground hip hop scene in Nashville. Like, there's just. There's jazz is bigger on your team. Jazz, yeah. Like, there's really something for everyone. There's, like, everyone can kind of find an edge. Prague. So, it's definitely not just uh, country music city. Like, some would believe it's, it's very diverse. Fable Cry. Um is an incredible band that we've been playing with for years and years and years. They are our band siblings, I would have to say. Those those folks, those are the, the homies. Um, I would kiss all of them. As far as other locals go, uh, Medusa's hairdresser is fucking great. Look what I did. You got the Blam Blams. Are you looking at yeah. me? I'm not from around here. I'm, I'm looking at Chase. Chase? I'm <laughs> well, Chase McClutch. You've named a lot of good ones. Yeah, those, those are all good. Yeah. There's there's like there's bands um, that are close to us that are in uh, Lexington, like you know that area. Like I really like Isolation Tank Ensemble, yeah. incredible group. 
I know they're not Nashville, but then I also really like Sarah and the Safe Word. And their stuff they're is Georgia. The uh, Sarah, yeah. Sarah so, and the Safe Word. So, so good. I don't know if you can consider them local anymore, but yeah, they, they were they're a great band. Um, and both people that we've done or are doing things with, so that's cool. Yeah, and then the, there was a band in Murfreesboro that existed for a very brief period called Bellavant that I really liked. I was sad to see them not go very far. They did like a couple songs and broke up, but you know, local band says. Blood to Submission. Yeah, Blood to Submission. Oh, yeah. Blood. For sure. So, yeah, there, there's a lot of good local talent around here. Yes. Absolutely. Plenty that I'm not thinking of. Mm-hmm. But not Nuclear Bubble Rap. No, absolutely yeah, not. Yeah, not there. <laughs> 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 to get that settled. I'd probably say for me, Starless, because after seeing that live, there's no coming back from that, really. Like, when everything goes red uh, at the end, and you're just like, oh. Uh, and, you know, funny enough, uh, I, last time I saw King Crimson, I was on acid. And, every, <laughs> <laughs> and um, everything turned red at the end, and at first I didn't know if that was like me just going, losing it or something. And it was like, oh, everything's just red now. There are two in a row on this album that I have to pick. I'm going to say Pictures of a City. I really, really like the riffs in that song. And they opened with it when I saw King Crimson and uh, blew my mind. I wish I could relive that moment a million times. I understand. Then the song after it on the album is called Cadence and Cascade. And it's an acoustic song. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful, pretty song that I really didn't think Crimson could do. And um, that those two. C- C- Pictures of a City really encapsulates what I like about the intense kind of poly, you know, polyrhythmic progressive side of the band and then their really melodic structured sensibilities are captured in cadence and cascade yeah, i really love frame by frame i think yes. that's my favorite one that one's just a jam oh, yeah. um and then i know like you go like, oh of course i love 21st uh, century schizoid man that's just it's that's, got the riff it still so. still slaps it's got the riff That was me. It was when me, Drew, Chase, and Alan, and our former drummer Jody all went. I, I remember very thoroughly soaking Drew's shirt with my tears <laughs> at that concert. Because uh, yeah, like King Crimson is a really special band for us, and I cried like the whole time. It was a really good show, and it was really special for us to all be there together. Yeah, it was really incredible. 